Welcome back to part two on the red couch with Susie Farbman. So you can look anywhere. It's not like you have to look for through a person or it could come through a song on the radio and you're driving in the car. It could come absolutely anywhere. Yeah, anywhere. Yeah, it's, and, and, and it's like the universe is sprinkling these, these little gifts upon us mm. if we're open enough to receive them. Yeah. So people that have survived something so serious as you have don't necessarily write about it, but how has writing about that kind of trauma helped you? Well, writing has always been therapy for me. Mm. And as Robin Roberts the other day said on ABC, her mother told her that the trick is to make, turn your mess into a message. Mm. And I do feel that way. If you can take something and create a story of it um, so that it has meaning for other people and then maybe can support others, and then, then it certainly doesn't make it worth doing, but... It certainly is a rewarding experience to have that kind of response. And the responses that I've had to the book God Signs absolutely amaze me. I had no idea it would have the reach it's had mm -hmm. or the impact it's had. What have some of the folks who have contacted you said about their experience of reading God Signs? Oh, one said it really, I mean, a few people have said, when, when I was writing the book, I felt, okay, this isn't just a story about dealing with cancer. This is a story about dealing with any sort of difficult challenge. Mm -hmm. And God signs can help us through any sort of difficult challenge. So I have had one reader say it helped her deal with her mother's death. Mm. Um, another gal say it helped her deal with the death of a really close friend. Uh, another say... She gave it to her niece, um, who was, uh, had just finished a treatment for breast cancer, and she just found it so encouraging. Mm. So, yeah, it's just it's great to get those responses. I just love it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it makes it very worthwhile, not yeah. just for you personally, which is right. wonderful, but for so many people. <clears throat> I remember you saying when we spoke earlier that Marion Williamson, mm -hmm had written the forward to your first book, and mm -hmm. she suggested to you to dialogue with the disease. Mm -hmm. Was that helpful? When she first suggested it, I thought, no way. Marianne had worked with a number of early AIDS victims uh, in California where she was at the time. Right. And she said, you know, she gave them this exercise to do, and they had found it very helpful. And I'm thinking, no way, you know, I, I, I don't want to have anything to do with this cancer, anything more than I have to do with this cancer. Mm -hmm. And But by the end of the day, I thought, oh, well, I'll give it a try. And, uh, you know, I, I basically told it off. <laughs> and I was amazed at the response. It actually, and I, I put the letter in the book, in God Signs. And uh, when I was done, after it sort of spoke to me, it was kind of like automatic writing. And I realized, wow, it's smarter than I am. And it told me some of the things it was trying to teach me. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's very helpful. I also loved, I love the idea of just simple ways to start to work with your fear or overcome fear. Because fear is so pervasive and it's, it comes up in so many ways. But certainly yeah. when you have a diagnosis like you had. So you had been working on a project for your two sons. I had. Will you tell me that story? Yeah, well, actually, I, it was something I had wanted to do and never found the time to do. Because when I'm fearful, my, f my first line of defense is my journal. Um, I had been writing in my journal over the years, and whenever I would write about my sons, it, sometimes when they did something cute, but more often they did something obnoxious or upsetting. Um, and so I would put their name in the margin and write about whatever it was that had occurred. Uh, and um, I had always wanted to take those excerpts and turn them into individual journals for my boys, especially because now they're both raising children. Mm. And um, it was it would at, at that point just one of them had a, had a child, but it, that it would be really interesting for them when they're tearing their hair out from their own children, 
to see that, you know, whoa, you know, I turned out okay, and I, I was, you know, not the ideal child. Uh, so I, I decided that since I was going to be stuck home in bed, chemo knocks the heck out of you. Mm. And um, that wasn't the word I meant to use. Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but um, you know, since I was going to be home in bed a lot, that I would give myself some sort of project that at least felt like I was doing something productive. And then, you know, if if in fact you know the docs weren't able to cure me, that you know my boys would have this mm. you know wonderful memory. Um, so so I did that, and I just I would you know I was in bed, and I took out my old journals, which were all handwritten, and I you know looked under the each kid yeah. and typed and did their whole did their whole history as seen through the eyes of their mother. And the other thing that was so um, helpful about that exercise was that I realized how worried I had been about so many things and what was the implications of this or that prank. <laughs> and you know, would they end up? I don't know. You know, in jail on the streets, whatever. You know. I have this terrifically talented brain when it comes to, you know, thinking up the worst, the <laughs> dire catastrophe. Um, and it was so interesting for me to see that 99% of what I thought, what I worried was going to happen, didn't happen. My boys and I are both terrific young men now and great parents and good husbands and mm. super guys. What an incredible thing to look back over all the things you had worried about and seen that hardly any of them had happened. It was it was it was amazing, and you know it's is it is as though I have t I have tended to view worry as some sort of disaster insurance. Mm, mm -hmm. You know, if, if I've thought about it, if I've anticipated it, it won't happen. Right, right. I can't and, and to And the that. and the bizarre part is, I never even thought about cancer. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Right, right. So looking back over your life and your experiences that you've had. If you could share a secret to living a happy and successful life, what would it be? Well, I think it might be, uh, can I do a multiple secret? You sure can. <laughs> <laughs> the more the merrier. Right. Okay. Um, clearly trying to be grateful and clearly focusing on all the things that are right with our lives, mm. with my life. And that can be anything from anything as small as a, full gas tank <laughs> or an empty dishwasher, right? Um, or it can be big stuff too. Yeah. Um, it can be a Sanders hot fudge sundae. I'm a Detroiter mm. and Sanders hot fudge is over the moon delicious. Um, or, or, you know, really significant stuff. Uh, so one would be gratitude. Two, for me, would be uh, prioritize. Mm. I have I've, I have learned that I only have so much energy that it takes me a long time to do something like write a book. Mm. Five years, actually, for both books. Each one was five years. Um, so if I prioritize, um, I, get more, I get more accomplished than I hope to accomplish. I have also learned to pray mm. a lot, and I pray to know my highest creative good. And to me, it's, you know, to write books that will be meaningful to other people and help encourage and inspire them. Um, and uh, to learn to exercise the lateral muscles of my neck, the ones that allow me to do this. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that allow me to say no to things that I don't feel are, you know, high priorities. Mm, wow. Yeah, and to, and to spend quality time with family. Those are all really, yep. really good and really important and doable. Yeah, doable. Susie, thank you so much for being a part of this and for sharing your story. Thank you so much. Anytime I can get word out about God's hands. I haven't told you what my ultimate secret ambition is, have I? I, I need to know it. Okay. Well, I'm a crossword puzzle nut. And someday, I am hoping that the word God signs will appear in a New York Times crossword puzzle. As a word that <laughs> Susie invented. Wouldn't even have to be that. I would just know. 
<laughs> I love it. I love it. May it be so. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on The Red Couch. <laughs>